Hello, this is Patrick from Southern Handmade, back with another sculpt for you today. We're doing one of my favorite recent characters, Baby Yoda, Grogu himself. Uh, I'm so excited for this. I made one uh, in my earlier days of sculpting, and uh, I think I'll put that up on the screen here. But uh, I wanted to remake one and make one with a little bit more detail. So we're going to get started with the pod. So I start by working in foil, trying to build the shape. Uh, I gotta make sure that the size and shape is what I want. Uh, once the foiling is done, I'm gonna use cardboard to give some structure to what's gonna be the top of the pod. Uh, so you see me cutting up strips here from an old uh, case of pop and uh, looping them over using hot glue to sort of put it together and just build that sort of dome slowly piece by piece. This method doesn't end up being absolutely perfect because the cardboard itself ends up being quite soft and I need to end up working the clay a little bit extra, but it does give it some structure so that when I try to smooth it and give it that nice rounded shape, I've got something more than just clay holding it together. All right, with the shape done, it's time to put clay over top of it. You'll see here, I struggle a bit with the cardboard slats. I end up just adding clay to that to give it more and more structure. I think I would have used a little bit more foil maybe on top of it to try to give it structure before adding the clay so that the cardboard itself would be smoother. But in the end, I think it ends up working out okay. It just takes me a little bit longer to get through this part of the process. And here you can see that edge breaking through and it just takes me a little bit of time to figure it out but this is an essential part of crafting you don't always know what you're gonna do until you start doing it and then you gotta try and if it works it works and if it doesn't well you just keep trying or you throw it all away and start again I've done that a few times in my Now, of course, the pod uh, is supposed to have sort of an inside space, but for this sculpt, I decided I'm going to build a flat layer, which is the inside, and then put on top of it uh, our Baby Yoda Grogu character, rather than build a full body and uh, things that you wouldn't really be able to see once you're sort of finished. Here we're starting to put some detail onto the pod itself. It's got the, uh, the shape in the middle of it. And so I'm measuring, I've run that through a pasta maker, and now I'm just trying to layer it up and line it up so it looks reasonably good uh, in the middle of that shape. Again, the pod has uh, the ability to sort of close, so it's got these layers that'll be, that fold into themselves. So I'm trying to add one of those layers as we go along. I'm not doing a lot of work to finesse the bottom of this, because I know I'm gonna be putting a strip around the entire edge of the pod once it's done. See here, I sort of struggle. I don't exactly know how to well put a curved shape down and get it shaped properly. So instead of getting it perfect, I go back through with this straight edge tool and try to shape uh, the edge so it comes out a lot smoother. Now some of those rough edges are going to be covered up. I realized that my the sort of the front face of the pod was looking rougher and rougher, so I decided to take a strip and really cement that edge 
uh, in such a way that it would look a lot smoother along the top of it. Here I've taken a straight edge of clay that I've cut out, run through my pasta maker, and now I'm trying to make that final lip for the pod and clean up all those rough edges. Uh, the pod itself has a lot of smooth edges, uh, like this lip and like the, the top of the pod. And it was really important to make sure to get this close to right so that in the final product you aren't spending a lot of time you know, uh, wondering about and looking at those edges and being like, oh, it's it's imperfect. They don't end up absolutely perfect, of course, but uh, they're good enough that, that you can't really tell some of those flaws, especially when you're looking at the whole of the project. And here I'm going through and actually smoothing that edge. I realized, of course, I should probably get rid of some of that before I put the edge on so I don't have to worry as much about how that strip actually fits on properly. Now we've got our basic pod shape together and we're gonna add some detailing to it to make sure that it looks as close to the, th the actual pod as possible. To do that, we were rolling out these round circles, uh, get them equal in size, uh, push them down, lay them flat, try to get a nice edge to them. Works just right. I do these here and I realize that they're not quite big enough, so I have to keep flattening them and shaping them and flattening them and shaping them. Once they're the same size, I start working on the internal mechanism that will attach to them. I ultimately end up realizing these are too big and shaping them more when I put them on the project themselves, these inner working um, round bits. And with that, we have basically our finished pod. Now we're going to start with the eyes. I'm using these glass beads to make the eyes. And so I'm going to be layering the color of the eye backwards. So usually you paint from the bottom up. And in this case, you need to paint from the top down so that the top layer can be seen. So I start with black and I realized my method here is really awkward and hard to get those perfect circles and everything right. So I ended up sticking them on the back of uh, a tool with some clay just to hold them in place. So I start with black and then I use a light brown to create that inner part of the eye uh, that sort of spreads through uh, his eyes. And so I will uh, use my brush to sort of mix that out of the edge. Now I'm using a darker brown to fill in the space that I've already done a little bit of the lighter brown in. And that will just help to blend and make that brownness of his eyes come through. And then finally, I'm gonna be doing a little bit of black around that edge just to give it another hard edge. And of course, using some white around the edge for the white of the eye. Uh, this is an imprecise science at best. Uh, fairly new to using these. But I think the, the end result works really well and certainly better than just painting on an eye on this kind of project. Pod being done, I tried to do a little bit of um, roughing it up with sandpaper. You can see it's looking a little bit rough there. And when I ultimately paint it, hopefully those grooves will come through 
uh, with some dirt and other things. So I have here a model head that I make. So when I make a project, I often test and practice the heads just to see the size and the scale properly. So I'll be using that to reference the body as I build it, just so I get a sense. I'll do a, a official head finally when uh, I'm ready for it. We're putting in this, this smooth piece of fabric, which is the backrest of the pod. This is something that I could see in pictures of, of the pod when I'm looking at it. And so I figured doing this piece separately now will give it that depth and that um, smoothness that I'm looking for there. And really it just helps to fill in the project and make it look less like a dark pit of clay smoothed in as roughly as possible and look more like a complete figure. With that, we're gonna start working on the body. So I wanna get the shape of the body, the size that I'm planning to work with roughly in place. The body doesn't have to be perfect in this case because there's lots of layers to the robe and so on, but it needs to be in the right spot. So I'm measuring it with the head. I end up thinking this is a bit too big in the end, but it gives me a good starting point to work on arms. Now, in this case, again, there's gonna be lots of fabric over these arms. So I'm mainly focused on getting the fingers and the wrist right because that's gonna be the exposed part. Uh, but this will be the foundation on which those robes are ultimately built. So I'm working on getting some fingers here for my hands, roughly the same size, smoothed out as best I can. Uh, Grogu has three fingers and we want to make sure that they are well spaced and look reasonable. And hands are hard. It's just the long and short of that story. Hands are difficult. So I am now ready with my hands to put things in place and keep them in place. So I'm using some bacon bond there to solidify that. And I'm smoothing it into the bottom as well. Uh, like I said, the bottom is gonna be something of a void where the body is coming from. And so we wanna blend that in just so that, you know, you can't see the hard lines between the top of the body and the bottom, which is theoretically below the clay. And I'm just using that fake head again, just to get scale right, see if I like the angle on the body so that when I eventually put the real head in, uh, it'll go well. I'm adding arms here, a little bit off camera, apologize for that, I'm still working on my camera skills. Uh, and we're layering those fingers, making sure that they're working well. Looks a little stupid right now, to be honest, uh, just because the arms are these really weird narrow tubes. And so I'm gonna be coming through with uh, smaller bits of clay to wrap around those wrists to make the illusion of that cloak. Some of the photos I was looking at sort of showed like an inner layer to the cloak and an outer thicker layer to the cloak. So I'm trying to capture here in these two layers of clay around the wrist. And with the cloak in place, I am trying to detail a little bit of wrinkles and put those fingers where they're gonna go because once those cloaks are in, I really don't wanna move them ever again. So those hands can actually be where they're gonna be. We're doing the same thing on the other side, getting those wrapped clays around so that uh, his cloak is really big and full and uh, lots of handmade wrinkles in there. So one of the bigger parts of the cloak is of course the neck piece, which I'm stretching and sizing, just trying to see how big I want it to be. Um, I'm gonna end up taking this off eventually and then putting some more layers of cloak behind. I, I opted to go for a very thick cloaked body, mainly so that there's a lot more to look at. Uh, if I didn't do too much of a cloak, uh, it might get a little lost in the, in the fray uh, of the project. Uh, and I wanted to give lots of visual wrinkles. You see me here, so try to solidify that piece, give it roughly the shape I want it to have. Again, there's that test head. And we've added in some layers around that piece, some on the bottom, some on the top, and 
ultimately I'm pretty happy with that. So now I'm gonna go through and add some wrinkle lines. Uh, sometimes I do wrinkles manually by adding a piece of clay on top. This time I, I do a lot of the wrinkling with a straight edge needle tool like that, where I just pull it through, try my best to get natural looking lines and smooth. Uh, I think it works reasonably well. And one last time I put that test head in just to see if I'm liking how it's looking. And it's time for the head. So first thing we're gonna do is uh, put in those visual lines to help the eyes find a place. I recorded this and apparently I spent most of the eye making and placing off camera, so I apologize for that. We're gonna have a cut there where we jump now to uh, building out the muscles and the shape of the face. He's got those big cheeks, so we wanna make sure those look nice and uh, are even to each other. And then we're gonna just be adding muscle on top of muscle, uh, putting that shape in slowly but surely. Uh, and over time, it does come together. It looks a little bit awkward at first, uh, but here we go with the eyebrow. Try to get that in in the ridge of the nose. I'm still developing my own method for building the, these kind of muscles. It always feels like there's a big pit where the nose is supposed to be for a really long time. Um, but you'll see me try to work around that eventually. We're getting that chin in so that we can eventually put that mouth in by putting the bottom lip and then the top lip on top. He has some jowls uh, with his bottom lip, which I really like and are a lot of fun to put together. And here we see that top lip going into place. And he's getting closer and closer to the proper look that we want, although he looks a little angry at this point. Hopefully we can do something to uh, raise those lips a little bit and closer to a smile. Start working on the ridges of his forehead. I'm doing them manually at first here, and I ultimately don't end up liking the way this looks. Uh, I think they just weren't thick enough or far enough back, so I end up doing them a little bit different. They go a little ET at the, at the level of wrinkle we've got there, and, and I wanted it to be a little bit more uh, wider in the wrinkles themselves. Here you see putting in those wider wrinkles just manually with the tool. And the head is just about ready for those big old ears. Ear placement is really critical on this piece. His ears are further back than uh, I certainly expected. And uh, the photo I was working off of had the ears bent down to the side as he was sort of looking at over the pod. And so I was trying very hard to get this angle right on the ear itself. There we have the head we're looking for, and I'm now just gonna attach it with some bacon bond. And we are essentially um, ready to go. With that, I painted the project up, and here is our completed Grogu, Baby Yoda himself. Check it out. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun making this piece. 
I have lots of videos. Every Tuesday I put out a quick tutorial of how to make a little charm. And when I get the time, I do these longer form time lapses. If you've got any ideas, any suggestions, put them in the comment below and I will uh, hopefully get to them. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Have yourself a great day and keep being awesome.